<laughs> Call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday evening, December 21st, 2015, at approximately about 7.04 p.m. Good evening, uh, councillors and guests, and uh, season's greetings to all. And we'll try to keep this uh, meeting moving uh, rapidly so that we can all get back home and start to enjoy the uh, uh, Christmas uh, holiday coming at us in the next uh, few days. So with that being said, I'm going to uh, recognize Councillor Moises Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I could, a moment of personal privilege. Yes, you may, Councillor. Um, I would like to introduce a, uh, a proud Brocktonian, um, a young lady that graduated from Brockton High School, uh, who's actually attending college in New York. Um, last year, she, uh, being a resident of New York, although from Brockton, with Brockton in her heart, she uh, participated and competed in the uh, Miss New York, Miss Teen New York USA pageant, and she won that. And last summer, she participated in Miss Teen United States, and she won that as well. And that's the one time that I don't mind losing to anything that's New York. <laughs> So uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure if we could, Mr. President, have uh, uh, Andrea Jabao come up to the microphone and say a couple Absolutely. of words. Absolutely. all so much for having me. It's just such a privilege and I'm so happy to be here in Brockton at the right time of the month to be able to speak to you all. Um, as Melissa said, I'm from Brockton, grew up in Brockton, been here all my life. And after graduating Brockton High School, I decided that I wanted to venture off to New York, um, get my degree and follow my dreams and be able to pursue my goals. And, you know, I can tell you that being from Brockton, and being someone that has so many goals and, you know, so many aspirations um, and not having anyone to really look up to, not having anyone to really model after was really hard and, and it honestly left room for doubt. So now that I have the privilege, you know, and the honor to be Miss Teen United States, I make sure that it's my duty to travel the country and I have this program, it's called Inspiring Minds Initiative, um, where I speak to young people about you know, pursuing their dreams, um, accomplishing their goals, that their dreams, their goals, their aspirations are 100% valid. And I find that, especially here in my hometown, um, now that I come back and I hear, are you serious, or from Brockton? It's sad. It makes me, it makes me very uh, upset, and it's very unfortunate because, you know, Brockton has so many to offer. We have so many talented individuals. It's, it's crazy, and it's so amazing. And so... For me to come back, I, you know, it's really part of my reign to be here and talk to them and be kind of someone for them to look up to. Um, so thank you guys so much for having me, and I'm really looking forward to spending the next two months here um, to really, you know, make a difference. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we you, wish Mr. you the very best over the next uh, few months as you uh, spend time here in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as uh, she said, uh, she's, a, she's a, uh, a proud Brocktonian, and hopefully uh, the young people that are watching us uh, at this moment will follow in her footsteps and uh, keep doing the right thing for the city of Brockton. Thank you, That's Mr. Right. Chairman. Great. Thank, thank you. you Andrew. We appreciate it. Thank you. Councillor DiNapoli. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move uh, order number seven. Out of order. And take it uh, right now, please. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. We'll take <coughs> item number seven out of order. All in favor of that? Opposed? We're going to take item seven out of order. Madam Clerk, will you please read the order? Order that the mayor be authorized to execute a development agreement between the city of Brockton and Eye on the Ball LLC and a, a Delaware Limited Liability Company having a usual place of business at Silversmith Park, 456 <coughs> Quinnipiac <coughs> Street, Building 1, Third Floor. Wallingford, Connecticut, 06492 for electronic advertising board with a digital copy here and after a digital <coughs> advertising board to be located at 59 Mill Street in the city of Brockton, Massachusetts. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And Attorney Nazarella could not be here this evening, so he is speaking on his behalf as our Assistant City Solicitor, Attorney Fisher. So I bring her to the podium. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, 
As just stated, we are here to get uh, authorization from the mayor to go ahead and sign off on this development agreement. I think it's an excellent uh, opportunity for the city to bring in some revenue. This is a contract between the city and I on the ball. They're proposing to put an electronic billboard in a commercial zone. The special permit required by the Zoning Board of Appeals to be issued in order to be granted the um, permission to do so has already been allowed, but part of the uh, ordinance requires that also this <coughs> development agreement be put into place prior to them beginning construction. Um, the way it will work is money for the city, obviously. There are mitigation fees involved in this, which begin at $20,000 annually to be paid. The first five years will be at that $20,000, and the initial payment will be for $100,000 to the city. Um, that payment will be made upon all the permits being issued to allow the work to commence. Thereafter, we have um, incorporated an incremental increase of 10% every five years. Thereafter, 10% um, additional funds will be allotted to the city, again, as mitigation fees. We will also be granted six hours per month to do um, public service advertisements. So what the city deems important, whether it be uh, local charity events, it could be, um, you know, welcome home, you know, if you lived in Brockton, you'd be home by now, people driving by, things of that nature. So I do think it is a, a really incredible deal for the city uh, at this time, and I'm absolutely willing to take any questions that you may have regarding this. Yeah, Very good. Thank you, Attorney. Just before we do that, I do want to make mention that David Gain, and he's the general manager, he is also present here this evening, oh. and we also have his attorney, uh, Jay Creedon, is also present present here as well, so if anyone has any questions pertaining to it. Councillor Bonds. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have actually several questions. Um, <clears throat> first, just for clarification, is I on the Ball LLC the same company that went into agreement with the uh, town of Canton in 2013? Is this the same company? That I'm not sure of. I apologize. Okay. Uh, yes, it, we are. Okay. Hi, how are you? Um, okay, I, I was kind of just going through the, I went online just to kind of take a look at the company just so I can get some background information. I found the contract um, that your company went into with the town of Canton in 2013 for the same kind of project, right? Yes. For the most part, an electrical, an electric billboard. It was, but we ended up, that was an asset that we bought with a bunch of other billboards. Okay. So we had an agreement, they had an agreement with Canton that we assumed and then it was modified. Okay, so now just for, I guess, my own uh, edification, in our agreement that's proposed to us, uh, on this first page here in section two, the mitigation fee of the $20,000 um, that our assistant city solicitor mentioned, is that the same thing as the initial grant fee that was given to the town of Canton of $25,000? How much for the town of Canton? Uh, town of Canton, Ion shall make an initial grant to the town in the sum of 25000 promptly upon the, upon the execution of the grant agreement and formal approval from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Office of Outdoor Advertising uh, to permit, blah, 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 blah. That Is that the a, same thing? It, almost. It was a, uh, the company that we, we purchased the billboard from owed the town of Canton money, so we made that initial $25,000 fee. So, yes, it, it you can label it that. So it's kind of like if you get out of a cell phone contract, the new company will pick up your cancellation fee. Yeah, but in a large terms? Yeah, large cancellation fee. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And um, also, there was something else in here, and I'm kind of just going through it. Um, again, after several of, of the first installment payments, um, our agreement, we have the $100,000, and again, in Canton, it was... Um, it was what? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Wait a minute, 100,000. Oh, no, no, wait, that's different, that's different. Um, but there was something about the percentage with regard to the gross of collected fees. Is that listed in here? In our agreement? Because it, it's listed in here, and, and it's, there's an example, actually, of kind of how the percentages will break down and what the, the town of Canton will get as you all kind the of Canton get. The Canton agreement, though, is uh, a very different deal than... Right. Uh, the Brockton agreement or any of the other communities that are doing this mitigation type of agreement. The Canton agreement was, um, the town of Canton was actually uh, more of an owner of the, the billboard asset that had been structured back in 2010, I think. 
So <coughs> there are two different types of agreements. Okay. So okay, I just wanted to be clear because this was all I had really to kind of yeah, compare. So I just wanted to make sure that I was clear on kind of what the, the two differences were. So yeah, the file on Canton is probably about this big on how that agreement came about. Okay. So it's, it's okay. It's not similar at all. Okay. And can you just explain again? You said that there'll be the 10 percent increase in revenue for. Can you just explain that? Yes, no problem. So the first five years, it will be $20,000 a year for this um, contract. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, in five-year increments, there will be a 10% increase to that $20,000. So if you actually look at the attached Schedule A, it will show you, this should be on the very last page of this agreement, it will show you years 1 through 30 how those increases take effect. Do you have that? Yes. No. Schedule A. You, you should have the new one. You, should, you received a new one on your desk this <coughs> Oh, this new one. Oh, okay. okay. Oh. There's an amendment to what, what you originally had in, in our packet. Yeah, so as you see, every five years it will increase by 10% that amount. And if the contract were to go the entire 30 years, I mean, the city, you know, could earn $771,561 as a result of this contract. Nothing, but they're going to make no okay, so this, this is 30 years? 30 year contract, yes. Okay. All right. Thank no, you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I appreciate Council it. Stewart. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. So this is cool. I've been in favor of digital billboards in the, in the city since I got on the council and just wasn't able to get it past the, the executive branch before. So I think this is good news. Uh, a question around, so the six hours of municipal use, who controls when those six hours are used? So does the city decide we'd like to have six hours at all at, at once or during peak, I, mean, I know it's unlikely, but I'm just yeah. the question. The broader question is, who controls when those six hours are? The um, company, okay. I believe it's on number seven in the contract, where they kind of go over those um, issues regarding the six hours total advertisement time. Obviously, unused space will be forfeited. Um, the mayor will actually designate an agent who will work with Eye on the Ball to determine content when these advertisements will be um, up and placed. Uh, it wouldn't be a, obviously a situation where you'd get all six hours at once, but it should be spread enough, enough out through the day. So it won't be, you know, six hours in the middle of the night when nobody can see it. Um, it'll be something that'll be worked between the agent that the mayor chooses and I on the ball directly. Okay, that's great. And then I had a specific question, and I can ask this question since I'm not seeking re-election. Okay. I've always had concerns about not enough advertising of elections. So I'm assuming there's no prohibition of having a nonpartisan ad that says, remember to vote today, for example. That's not excluded from this agreement, correct? There's nothing necessarily excluded unless it's in violation of the law or if it's, you know, something obviously discriminatory or to that effect. So okay. everything's open for discussion. But certainly I don't see why elections couldn't be part of the advertisements if that's what the mayor's agent so chooses. That's great. And then lastly, um, so the, the fee, the annual fee, um, that, does that go into the general fund? Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, and the second to last question. So, are, are, is the company interested in other places in the city for placing billboards? Uh, right, right now, we're all set. We're just <coughs> going to put the one up on Mill Street and, and see how that operates. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank you. Council Moynihan? Yeah, just one sec. Just going on in the back of uh, Council Stewart. So, if there are like last year, emergencies that we've had with snow and all that, no schools and all that, you're not going to be tying us down to just six hours. It's a good, I mean, you know, things could happen as we go along. Like last year, we had three months of snow in a row, practically. Uh, so, I mean, are they going to... The contract calls for six hours, so okay, we are they is it be entitled to more than the six hours. And also, Mass DOT has, you know, by regulation, they get a right. mandatory 15 hours. So, I mean, 21 hours uh, a month is going to outside of eye on the ball, which is already a significant amount, amount of Okay, hours I just want to make sure that, you know. So that's right, so for example, Mass DOT would use the, the opportunity to issue amber, amber alerts on these electronic billboards, okay. things that come up suddenly, you know, so it would be certainly something they could be contacted and say, we have this emergency situation. Is there any way we can, you know, advertise this sooner than later? 
Yeah, okay, just uh, six hours doesn't seem like much for if we're going through a winter and all, <coughs> or even whatever, hurricane, whatever, things like that right. could happen. So. Yeah, I mean, six hours across the board was typical as far as what they typically allow for free, you know, advertisement space. Yeah. This is a business, and they do sell their advertisement space, and again, 21 hours of it is going just to the state and the city alone for free, so. Right, okay, just, it just, uh, just a lot of ordinary things happening. Right. I just want to, you know, we could have some leeway, whatever, and... Uh, no, I understand your question. Okay. I would, yeah, I would say no more than the six hours, just because that's what's mandatory by the contract. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Council. Councilor Azak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening, Attorney Fisher. How are you? Good evening, Councilor. I have a quick question. Um, do we have any other electronic billboards in the city right now running? Yes. I, yes, we do. I was going to say, I think we do. You have... You one have the one at the holiday. I haven't worked with that one. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, okay. He actually did the first one if you had further sure, questions. Sure, and that's what that I, I, I know we do, but I, I just want everybody at home to, okay. to hear that we do. Um, and I wanted to, maybe we can ask um, Attorney Creedon. Good evening, Attorney Good evening. Creedon. Um, so how are they running, the, the ones that are already existing up well, and running? Basically the same state situation. Uh, we didn't have any uh, operating contract at the time that we tied the city down to any of their own time. Uh, to answer, answer just your question, there was some concern about political Actually, I prefer, I prefer Councillor Stewart in oh, this. Councillor Stewart, yeah. excuse me. There is, um, there was some concern about political ads that, you know, and who would control whether or not they should be in the city time. So, I mean, there was some concerns on that first sign, which was the first one up at, uh, uh, at West Chestnut Street. But other than that, uh, just there was no specific time because there was no operating contract. So that's already in place. This one and the other one that just came at the same time ours did um, will have uh, city time. Okay, my, the whole purpose of my question is just to make sure that this contract's comparable, if not, you know, just as good as the ones we already have that are already existing and that because I know we have, we have them up and running just so people can see what I've done other side. This is rather generous, if you want my legal opinion, rather generous both, both to the city and the state as far as time goes, the 10-second uh, situation. Well, and again, it's spread, just to be clear on it, it's spread <coughs> over the 24-hour period so that it's not all bunched at, let's say, 2 a.m. in the morning. No, they're really great. So, no, very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council. I, and I think to keep point, uh, Attorney Creedon, um, this development agreement also is going to be consistent to the other two that are operating. We're going to have to go back and talk to the one that is located by sign design because I believe everyone's going to have to fall into this type of compliance. And what it does here, Council, is it brings, the way I look at it, is it brings revenue into the city of Brockton. So I think that's the positive thing we have to be looking at. And I think that's what the mayor is looking at as well in how he turns that around and that funding could be used in, in some other things he may see fit within City Hall, within the school department. It's all going to be beneficial to the city in itself. So that's, that's the plus that I look at. But any other uh, questions, councilors? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Thank you all for, for coming this evening. Thank you. Mr. Appreciate Chairman. it. Thank you. Oops, Madam Clerk, we'll go back to item number one. Yeah. I would make a motion to take number eight out of order. Second. Second. Move to take number eight out of order. Motions are made. Second. All in favor? Opposed? We'll take number eight out of order, Madam Clerk. Order that the Mayor of Brockton be in he is hereby authorized to file and accept grants from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs and that the Mayor of Brockton be and is hereby authorized to take such other actions as are necessary to carry out the terms, purposes and conditions of this grant to be administered by the Brockton Redevelopment Authority and that this resolution shall take effect upon passage. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, good evening, Councillors. Uh, I have some suggested amendments to the order as it exists, and I'll explain the reason for that. Uh, the city obtained this grant, uh, and the state was looking to have it authorized by City Council before the end of the calendar year. And they also asked that the full allocation of the cost of the project be subject to that City Council order. Well, a portion of this grant is coming from CDBG money, or the, or the match that is, is coming from CDBG money. The Council doesn't appropriate that. The order as, as submitted with language from the state doesn't fully accomplish what we needed to accomplish in order to ensure we got the grant. Basically, the order doesn't really appropriate the money that's in the grant. Uh, the council needs to do that. And second, 
there are two places in the order as it was submitted where it talks about the allocation of fiscal 17 CDBG money and we can't allocate that yet because we haven't had it. So the amendments that I've given to Councillor Studensky would correct those two problems. The first amendment takes care of one of the problems in the whereas clause and it changes the allocation of money in fiscal 16 and fiscal 17 in CDBG funds to a total allocation as the mayor intends through the Brock and Redevelopment Authority. And the second amendment takes care of that same problem and actually appropriates the city uh, grant of $230,000. So uh, with respect to the actual project itself, I think uh, the city planner and economic development chief, uh, Rob May, can handle the, the, the uh, descriptive issues there. But it's all pretty much good news. It's a city uh, park which is going to get renovation, and it's in a key area of the city, very visible. But to make it happen and comply with the state, we've got to do these two changes to the order as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Any, um, any questions in regards to uh, the way it's been presented so that we can amend um, the order that was in front of us? Do, um, Mr. President, do we need to make the amendments now? We, we, uh, um, we're going to move to make those amendments now, correct. Mr. Chairman, Council I will move to amend yes. this order uh, in conjunction with the letter from the mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, the actual two major parts are uh, the second paragraph and the fourth paragraph. Right. to make this a workable item and to repair and get Keith Park back into the shape that it has been for years previous to now. Second, second a motion. Second. Motion's been made and seconded that what we're doing is reworking the order based upon the letter that the mayor has sent us in regards to paragraph number two and number four. Motion's been made and seconded that we amend uh, that order. All in favor of that? Opposed? Okay, so we're in favor of that. And that at this time, any other questions in, in regards to the whole order in itself? I think it's a, make a favorable recommendation as amended back to the full council. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council as amended. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full city council. Thank you, council. That's $330,000 for city parks. We thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madam Clerk. I hope. Item number one. Order and compliance with the provisions of the election laws. Notice is hereby given that the special state primary election will be held on Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016, and that the special state election will be held on Tuesday, March 1st, 2016. Invited John McGarry, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. McGarry. You're very festive this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I thought it was appropriate since I just left a visit with a large group of children to, very nice. to join very you this nice evening. Your community work is appreciative. He must have been in the mayor's office. <laughs> any, uh, any questions in regards to any statement you want to make? Uh? Councillor, as you're aware, uh, we've had a, quite a number of elections this, this year. The money that uh, you had given me for the, uh, the elections uh, for this, for the, actually the 2016 has, was eaten up in 2015 because of the uh, special elections we had then and now we're faced with another special election plus the March presidential primary which is, is standard uh, every four years. So this money that um, won the orders um, are a legal requirement to call the election uh, that I need to post um, and then the money that is in future ones are obviously to run the election itself. Um, Make a favorable recommendation back Second. to the council. Maggie. On the motion, Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. McGarry, how are you? I'm very well, Council. Um, during the uh, November elections, we had the issue of uh, local elections in the city and the state elections that uh, Senator Brady got elected. And I see here that in March, we're going to run into dual elections as well. We've only in, Only in the 12 precincts that are in the 9th Plymouth District, Councilor. But well, well, what I'm saying is that on Tuesday, March 1st, mm -hmm. the city goes out and votes on the, pre on the presidential election. That is correct. Will they get two ballots or will they get one ballot with both names on the... On they the, they will be the district. same system. The state runs... This is a state election that we're running and they, would, they run two ballots. There will be... Every voter will receive the, uh, the general election ballot for the seat of the 9th Plymouth District and they will also be required to request, because it is a primary, they will be required to request 
the ballot of the party they either belong to or they desire to vote if they are an unenrolled voter or, quote, an independent voter. So that's perhaps something that we need to do from now until uh, March 1st in terms of educating our folks to, uh, as they uh, approach the, uh, the polling places to, re to request. Uh, Absolutely. It's, well, they, they, they are going to get the general election ballot. Everyone will be handed, handed the general election automatically. That's what the staff will do. That's what the staff did in the, in the November election. They will have to declare, as always in a primary, what party ballot if they are a Democrat, they have to take a Democratic ballot. If they are a Republican, they have to take a Republican ballot. Um, if you are unenrolled, you have your choice. There will also be Green Rainbow and um, United Working United Working Party ballots. Also, those are uh, they have party status. So there will actually be four parties to choose from on Election Day in March. Um, but everybody will receive. If this, and again, what needs to be understood is this is only the 9th Plymouth. There's only the 12 precincts that are involved in the 9th Plymouth, which is all of Ward 2, 3A, B, and C, 4A and D, 5A, and 7A and B. Otherwise, there's only one ballot in the rest of the city, and that is the one that you're going to choose in the primary. So it's incumbent upon. Um, the candidates that are going to be on the ballot up in, in the 9th Plymouth to make sure they are educating their voters when they are going door to door or doing the mailings. And I'm sure that I'll do something with cable. I usually do. Well, let me know when that happens because I think um, because of, you know, my ability to, to uh, speak a couple different languages and stuff, that might be something that I can do to help out as well too. With the, I, uh, I would certainly love for you to get the ethnic communities. Any, anyone that can get me, um, the bilingual <laughs> workers, I would greatly appreciate also. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. McGarry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council. Council, is there any other, any other questions? Do we have a motion on it? it motion was made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. <coughs> Clerk, item number two. Order and compliance with the provisions of the election laws. Notice is hereby given that the presidential primary will be held on Tuesday, March 1, 2016. Invited John McGarry, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. McGeary. It's nice to see you again, Councillor. It's a pleasure. <laughs> you haven't changed one bit. <laughs> Just a few minutes point. older, that's all. <laughs> Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion was made and seconded to recommend favorably back to the full city council. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. All set. Thank you, former Councillor McGeary. <clears throat> I think we have one more, Councillor, don't mm -hmm. we? Do we? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're I trying to charm. Charm. I was letting you off the hook. <laughs> I appreciate that. Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 87000 from the Stabilization Fund to the Board of Elections. Personal services other than overtime, 70000 Personal services overtime, 2000 uh, Purchase of services, 15000 In order to fund extra costs for financing elections on February 2nd, 2016 and March 1st, 2016. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and John McGarry, Executive Director. Questions, Council, Council Rodriguez? Uh, no, Councilor Azak, did you? Motion well, to approve. No. Back in. No, no, she's got. Yeah. Oh. But I go by where my eyes oh, go. Okay, I know you're okay? a little That's, nearsighted. Yeah, so. I go where my eyes go first, then I go back. Yeah. Thank, thank you, uh, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. McGarry, just another question that because it came up in the in the community quite often because, um, as you said earlier, we've had a number of elections held mm -hmm. during the uh, the year. And there's some confusion in terms of who pays for the elections, uh, that some folks feel that some federal elections are paid for by, by the federal government, <coughs> some, some state elections are paid for by the state government, and some local elections are paid by the local government. Can you just uh, clarify and give us uh, some, uh, some clearance on this so that at least the confusions that exist out there would actually go away? All personnel costs are borne by the city for all elections. No matter what they No are. matter what it is. All personnel costs are borne by us. The only thing that is picked up in a state election cycle, the state will pay for the programming of the, um, the handicap access machines, and they, will, they provide the ballots. But we pick up the cost for um, all personnel. Um, in the city elections, we pick up all costs, obviously. Federal elections and state elections are basically the, are treated the same way. We do receive back annually, um, uh, I'm sorry, biannually, uh, money from the state because by 
uh, state order, the polls must be open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. While we maintain that, those hours in the city regardless, you could conceivably change uh, the hours of, of the opening of the polls to ten hour, total of 10 hours. So there's a three hour difference which the state reimburses us for um, uh, biannually. And that money goes into the general fund when it comes back to us. All right. Thank you for that explanation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Councilor Rodriguez, for being so courteous. Um, well, I was trying. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. McGarry. Good evening, Council. Um, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. One is, uh, on average, what does a special election cost the city? Uh, citywide? Yes. Personnel costs are approximately, for this, this is for my department only. I do, this police department will have to tell you what their costs are. Uh, my department is approximately $50,000 for personnel costs. Uh, ballots are approximately $12,000 to $14,000. Programming is another 5,000 for our um, <coughs> our machines, the AccuVote machines, the handicap machines, which we would have to pay for, would be another uh, about 1,500 to 2,000 uh, <coughs> dollars. Material, um, you're talking in about a thousand dollar range for uh, printing costs. So we're talking over 80,000, around 80,000 or so, correct? Yep. Yeah, yeah. For a citywide election, it's, it's upwards to 80,000 total costs. Mm -hmm. um, very good. So in, in this case, what, what can we do to get more people out to vote? Because it's very costly. It costs us a lot of money, and we yeah. need people to come out and vote. Can we get those electronic signs? Can we get those vote today? Can we do anything? We, we do have the vote, vote today signs that are put out across the city. Um, to Council, to be very honest with you, it's, it's, uh, it's getting... It's the job that you folks do to stir up the interest in the election. It's the banging on doors. It's the doing the, the drops. It's doing the mailings. It's, it's holding community events. Um, it's your debates. Um, you know, uh, to us, the, the job is to run the election in a professional manner so that every citizen has an equal opportunity to cast their vote on Election Day. Um, it's the only way to do a nonpartisan um, we have to be very, very careful that uh, when we deal with candidates, and if we're going to start doing things other than saying vote, then we have to make sure that it, we're not getting into any of the ethics uh, areas of, of danger. Um, certainly, if, if the city want, has all sorts of money, I would love to have signage to put up. Um, you know, a lot of people, again, go through the thing of comparing the city of Brockton with the towns around us. Well, the towns around us have maybe one or two roads that are the main traffic bearing roads in the community where they can throw up a vote, you know, march, whatever, or however they do it, because again, the towns do it in the spring. It's a lot easier to do something like that. You think of the number of the roads that are coming into the city of Brockton, um, the costs associated with buying them and maintaining them, changing, because again, every year they would have to have the dates changed on them. There's a cost associated with all that. And I can honestly say, since my staff, when I took, the, took this job in 2000, I had five employees. I'm down to three. My budget was significantly greater. I've maintained what we have to do for the last 15, 16 years at about the same amount of money. I'm very grateful that I've been given that to fund uh, the required work because everything we do is statutory. It's, it's, um, it, it's something you have to do. The city has to run elections. We have to do the census. We have to maintain the database. Um, it's required of all 351 communities in the Commonwealth. If the day comes that we can get extra money, I would love to get electronic signs that we could put up and, and have someone programmed to do that or to have a cruise. I used to have bulletin boards put up on all the polling locations from the building department. They don't have the staff available to do that anymore. Nor can I carry the cost of replacing the damaged ones. But, you know, again, and if the day turns around and we have extra money, I would love to come back before you and ask for all those things. Very good. Um, actually, congratulations. Your, your office does a great job with elections. I've been part of it, Thank so you. I know you do a, a wonderful job. It's not an easy thing, Election Day. <laughs> but um, so w w what I'm understanding is we don't have any kind of signage already. We don't own any kind of electronic <coughs> boards Not electronic, all. no. No, no or any just, kind of signage that says vote or... We have sandwich boards that go out. We have, we have uh, approximately a dozen of sandwich boards that so, go out. And those go out at the... Uh, they're up at the locations, correct? 
Okay. Yeah. Building department uh, gets them out at 6 a.m. in the morning on election, between 6 and 7 a.m. in the morning on election day. Then those, the, the crews that the building department has, I assign to different buildings to make sure that the buildings get up and running because of the age of much of my staff. Um, they need assistance in, in getting prepared because many of us, as you know, we use schools and the, uh, and the senior centers and things like that, and, and uh, they're being used the day before, so my equipment may be there, but they need help getting it um, set up for the actual election process. Well, thank you for all you do, and the whole purpose of this question is we hear so often, I didn't know that there was voting today, so I'm just trying to figure out if there's anything we can do, but, but thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council. Council Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. McGarry, I just, in, on past agendas, uh, some of the special elections have cost like $150,000, for instance. I think the casino um, question or the ballot question or something, it was 150. So can you just um, go through with me what the difference, the reduction that, that, in this? That also picked up the police department. Oh, okay. So, it's, you know, we, we, we did it uh, because we had to do a mailing. <coughs> we had to prepare for mailings and do mailings also associated. That was a special election, and there were, there were different requirements for that than there are for a city candidate election. Okay, okay. And, so uh, and that also, like I said, that also included what was from the police department. Okay, so now will we ex should we expect uh, an invoice from the police department for their... You, um, I don't know what their overtime, they have in their overtime fund, but I would... Um, make a guesstimate that with all these elections that you may be seeing a request come before you from their department too in the future. Okay, for some overtime or something of that nature? Yeah, because oh. it, it is. It's there. They run between, depending on who is available on those days, they run anywhere, I would think, from 30, I want to say what I've seen for figures is 38 to 50 themselves, uh, depending on the personnel. level, pers for their personnel costs, because uh -huh. it depends on who is available to work. And obviously, if it's a patrolman, he's getting next number of dollars. If he's a sergeant, he's getting right. that. If he's a lieutenant, you know. And I do have, um, they do a fantastic job for me. I can't thank the, the Brockton Police Department enough. Uh, really? They're in here. We're in here at 5 a.m. They're in here by, f you know, 5.30, quarter or 6, picking up their supplies and going out to the precincts. And some of those officers work the entire shift to cut, make sure that they're covered. Again, statutorily, we have to have a police officer um, or a uh, constable at every precinct, um, and preferably, in, in my view, a police officer. So. Right. And uh, just one more question, um, because I brought it up with the, the casino vote. Have we been paid back mm -hmm. for that yet? Oh, okay. that check, they had that check back um, within days of it being submitted to them. Okay, okay, good. I just, yes. just check it. They wanted to make sure there were no, no bumps in the road too. Okay, thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Gary. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening Mr. Gary. Um, I agree with you 100% John. It's, it's, it's really on the, uh, the onus is on the candidate to get out the vote. But one thing I mentioned uh, a few budget cycles ago, I think it was well received, was the plaquettes in front of the schools, mm -hmm. um, Hancock, Kennedy, all the middle schools, where they put the uh, announcements. Mm -hmm. Could, couldn't we put vote and put the date on that? Well, that would be, uh, again, in conjunction with the school department. With the school you know. committee, right. Yeah. And the chairman, yeah. I think we know who he is. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know. Is he around? <laughs> <coughs> Some of the schools do it automatically. Others yes. certainly it would be nice if they, those that have those, not all schools have those, but any that do would be nice if they put, you know, election day for any election that's coming it, up. Across it would be the board. Nice. Excellent. Thank they, you. They are all, they all, they're all notified of the dates. Right. Through the superintendent, because I send a letter every year annually to the superintendent with the election dates. And, I, and again, while well, I've got the year, um, I want to thank the superintendents, the last several superintendents, for e taking the November election day and making it a, a, a day off for the students. It significantly improves the safety, one, the safety for the children because of the turnout we get in the November election. Um, and, and it just makes uh, my poll worker's job that much, gives them a little bit more uh, ease in dealing with it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for what you do, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Solomon. Councilor Moynihan? Uh, thank you. I, th I think we've covered everything here, but I think the, great, the question really is, dressed as you are today, is it true the rumor that was going around that you had requested cookies and milk and the mayor cut it out of this order? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Isn't it true that Moynihan's on the bad list? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you never know, Councilor. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, Councilor. <laughs> Any other questions? <coughs> <coughs> 
Seeing as none. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Motion. Make a motion, motion to recommend favorable. Yeah, again. Again. Motion be made and second to recommend favorably back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Good evening, Mr. McGeary. Thank you, Mr. Sherry. Wish you all a very Merry Christmas oh, oh, oh. and a happy, healthy, healthy, healthy New Year. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. And the same to you. <laughs> I also just want to take a moment to recognize Councilor Elect from Ward 5, Ian Borgard, is sitting in the, in the back, and you've got one more meeting to sit in the back, Ian. That's it. Uh, Madam uh, Number Four. Resolved that the mayor and city solicitor be invited to appear before a committee of this council to report on what is being done to have the Commonwealth return to the Commonwealth return to the city of the Gainley building property, and if nothing is being done to discuss commencing efforts to have the Commonwealth return this property to the city. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, Solicitor. Chairman. Uh, as, you, as you all re recall, we, uh, I filed this resolve um, a few, few months ago and the mayor came before us and we had agreed at that time after it was vetted out that we would continue until the last FinCom in December to get an update from the mayor because he said it was an ongoing, uh, so that's the purpose of this and, and we could always, with the legislative session starting in January, we could always revisit that and, and I will. With that being said, good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, Councillor. Uh, the Status is probably essentially unchanged since my last uh, appearance before the council. Uh, I will tell you that uh, we are advocating as strongly as we possibly can uh, to convince the administration to fund the uh, Satellite State College campus downtown. Uh, I had a meeting with the governor last Thursday. I spent most of my time discussing this one issue uh, with him. I had a telephone conference today with the Vice Chancellor of UMass Boston on this issue. I have a phone call tomorrow scheduled with the Lieutenant Governor to talk about the college. And if anything, the uh, level of activity has picked up as I think we're getting down to the wire to the administration uh, making decisions as to which higher ed projects they may be willing to fund in the future and which ones not. Uh, the Governor indicated to me uh, that he'd like to make a decision on this by the end of February. So um, I think that in terms of uh, in terms of <coughs> raising the issue with the state now, what the future use of the Ganley building might be should they decide not to fund is still premature that all of our efforts should really be focused on uh, trying to convince the administration to fund the school, uh, the construction of the building for the school. Uh, so. Uh, I think that uh, as per your suggestion, Councillor, if you want to uh, diary this up uh, to refile for a March meeting, I think at that point we'll probably know. And I can assure the Council that at whatever point in time I am given any type of official notification as to what the Administration's intention is, uh, I will notify the Council as soon as I possibly can. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor. Uh, Councillor Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Mr. Mayor, good to see you. Good to see you, Councilor. Uh, your conversations also include, I would imagine, the funding of Massasoit Science Building. Is it all yeah. one package? I actually, uh, I actually spent quite a bit of time this afternoon with President Wall of Massasoit and uh, had some very detailed conversations with him around uh, some of the um, exchange of ideas that he and his leaders at Massasoit have been having with the administration. Uh, surrounding the Allied Health Sciences building. And uh, yeah, those are both going on and I think they're both important. I'm more directly involved with the Downtown College Collaborative. Uh, however, uh, I am also working closely with President Wall and supporting that proposal also. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Right. Chairman, Sullivan. with that being said, uh, and again, due to the, uh, this is our last FinCom, I'm going to make a motion to table this and then collectively, and we'll have some new colleagues joining us, we can revisit this uh, much to uh, the date. We'll diary it until March. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded that this item be tabled. All in favor? Opposed? It passes. It will be tabled. Thank you and Merry Thank Christmas, you, Councilors. Thank you. Christmas. Uh, number five, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of $6,098.66 from the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards Plymouth County Region 5 Emergency Coalition Grant Fund to the City of Brockton Board of Health Massachusetts Medical Reserve Corp Grant Fund. These grant monies are for the purpose <coughs> of building the level of volunteers for local medical reserve corps. 
Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Louis Tatalia, Jr., Executive Director. And, Councilors, just to <coughs> inform you that uh, Anne Marie was notified by uh, uh, Mr. Tatalia this afternoon that he was unable to make this evening's meeting. That's why he is not present. So, Okay, Mayor, and I was just going to say the same thing. I also received a call from this evening okay. asking to be excused, uh, but I know that the CFO can certainly handle this for you. Very good. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening again, Councilors. Uh, this is an annual grant that we receive from the state for this uh, Medical Volunteer Corps. We're the coordinator for Plymouth County on that. There's no match to it. 6,000. Motion to 600. recommend for Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council for presentation. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Item number six. Order appropriation of forty eight thousand from the ambulance receipts to the fire department capital. These funds will be used to purchase an incident command vehicle for the chief superintendent of fire alarm with the installation of the required equipment to include VHF in UHF radios, visual and audible warning systems, and proper markings. This vehicle would be used for responses to any and all incidences in daily matters requiring the presence of the Brockton Fire Chief both with the city and also surrounding communities. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Michael Williams, Fire Chief. Good evening, Chief. How are you? <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Council. <coughs> You want to make a uh, little presentation or, well, or does this, it speak for itself? This appropriation is something that has been done in the past. We've moved ambulance funds from the ambulance account over to our capital budget um, for vehicle purchases, equipment purchases, as it relates to the fire alarm division and, as I said, uh, command vehicles. Make a favorable recommendation. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded for a favorable recommendation. All in favor of that? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. Favor recommendation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief. Councilors. Councilors, just before we take any other just quick extra items, I just want to um, make mention, as you know, every year in City Hall, the, uh, the ladies and gentlemen of City Hall do some decorating and they decorate the offices and, and they do an outstanding job. And every year they have a contest. And, and I know when I came into the building just last week, um, and I was only in the basement floor, but had even gone to, uh, into the assessor's office or something and saw how, how nicely they were decorated as well as, again, the other offices, and I didn't get a chance to come upstairs. But in indicating um, just that through their contest, the, the first prize went to the city auditor's office, and we have uh, our, uh, our uh, clerk here that's uh, very proud of the fact that uh, her office won first prize. And second prize did go to the assessor's office, which you should have a, you should stop by and see as well. They did an outstanding job. A good round of applause for them. The third prize, the third prize went, uh, I believe, to the police, um, EDTs, and, and the library. So another round of applause for them as well. But I just, I just wanted to make mention, because I think sometimes we forget the people that actually do all the work the ones that are in City Hall and they take time to make it look good for the public when they come in and during the holiday season I think it's most important and everybody's been talking about how festive City Hall looks so you know just uh, just a great congratulations and, and back to them. Councils next Monday um, 8 o'clock p.m. please um, be here as in those councils that are leaving I hope that you'll be present uh, uh, here it shouldn't be a long meeting and then of course we have inauguration day January the 4th as the clerk mentioned to you last week if those of you have not contacted his office in regards to the luncheon tickets, please do so because deadline is Monday at noontime and they need to know. I guess tickets have been moving uh, quite rapidly, so he wants to make sure everything's accounted for. Um, and I think at that point, uh, I don't have anything other than coming from me as the City Council President to all of you. I want to wish you all a happy and healthy holiday season. And of course, to the people of the City of Brockton, even my constituents as well, let's hope that next year is a great year. And let's hope that we can also look forward to have some peace in, this, uh, in our country and throughout this world through what we've been going through uh, recently. But uh, from me to all of you, Merry Christmas. And uh, appreciate all that you've done uh, with me this year. It's been, it's been great. I have one more, one more to go. <laughs> but in any case, anyone have anything that you'd uh, like to add? Where are you season? taking us uh, tonight? As you know, it is the custom uh, the before Christmas. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. I'll be buying. <laughs> anything else to come before this committee this evening? Seeing none, meeting adjourned. <laughs>